Hey guys, I'm Nice Mark, and today I want to show you 64 tricks, facts, and glitches in Minecraft. I'm currently running the version 1.8.3, and let's start. Nether stars are immune to Wither Boss explosions. So, basically, if you just drop them around here and now summon a new Wither Boss, you can drop as many Nether stars as you want, and let's see what happens. Well, nothing. You can trick the enchantment table by first putting a go to in it. And after that, just replace it with a diamond tool. And now, if you enchant, you have higher chances of enchanting something good. And an interesting trick that is going to save you a lot of time, especially when mining, is to take another item different from the ones that you want to store in the chest, and then just hold shift and double click. It's basically going to transfer everything into the chest. And of course, you can do so for a lot of items. For example, if you have almost a full inventory or even a full inventory. And as you can see, with just two clicks, it transfers everything of this item type. That's pretty cool. With 9 coal, you can cook 72 items. However, if you just take the 9 coal and combine it into a block of coal, you'll be able to cook 80, which is 8 more, which basically saves you 1 coal. Chain armor is better than gold, however, it's not better than iron. You can play Minecraft upside down if you go to your super secret settings and just try to switch between them. So let's see if I can find it again. Yes, here it is, I found it. If you want to save your diamonds on dev and you also have cheats enabled, then you can just enable this command, game row keep inventory true, and if you die, you're going to keep all of your items. You can place carpets on doors and also use the doors. If you have access to cheats, you can summon a triple chest with this command. So set block chest at my position. And I'm going to do this three times in a row. And now if I open the chest, here you go. It's pretty much so big that it doesn't fit in my screen. And if you try to store something in it, let's see. As you can see, there's plenty of room. Ladders don't have to be straight for you to be able to climb on them. For example, this setup is also going to work. As you can see, stems attached to pumpkins and melons, even if they aren't fully grown. Which is a little bit weird. Like, do you see the transition? Quartz blocks are cool, and you can see the outlines of each block. However, if you want to have a smooth texture, you can just use upside down stairs for your floor. And this is what you're going to get. See the difference? Fences can be attached to open fence gates. If you want to quickly switch between blocks which you have in your hotbar, simply click the middle mouse button. So now I have cobblestone, middle mouse click, I have quartz, and when I'm finished building with quartz, I can just middle mouse click the cobblestone and I'll switch to cobblestone. And yeah, if I want to build with Podzo, I also middle mouse click. Did you know that it took 1162 days to go from beta 1.8.1 .1 to the full release 1.8.1? And I'm currently in 1.8.3. You can use a hoe on coarse dirt to convert it into normal dirt. Flower pots use the center of the dirt texture as their soil texture. So as you can see right here. You can walk diagonally over gaps without falling.
If you want to save up on box while building the floor, then you should use half swipes instead. So as you can see, we have three box of quartz right here, and we're going to turn them into six half swipes. And this way we manage to finish our floor without having to get any extra box of quartz. You can put armor on an armor stand with dispensers. You can hide lighting in an armor stand by placing a torch in it and then equipping boots and leggings. And now your torch is going to be invisible and that's about it. You can also put a plate mail and a helmet but it's not required to hide it. And if you're looking for a way to decorate your ramps, you can try to put it on a cactus. So just take a flower pot, a cactus and place your ramp on top, like that. Of course you need to power it since it's a redstone lamp. And maybe you could do something like this, uh, I don't know. But I think it looks okay. Right now I'm in a cage made out of iron bars, but I can place blocks outside of it, just like that. Now you cannot do the same from the outside to place the box inside, so you need to be inside and only works like this. If you want to save up on power trails without caring too much about the speed of the minecart, then just place 37 rails and then one power trail. It's going to be enough to keep the minecart going. To make it easier, just make stacks of 37 rails and after it ends, place one power trail. Use a name tag on a zombie and let it kill you. And the name that you used on the name tag is going to show up in the chat. Use it to make a joke on your friends. Meet Dinner Bunny. The command for this is going to be in the description. You can actually jump over a two block gap without sprint jumping. So I'm not sprinting and I can jump over this gap easily. Make stairs quickly with carpets by placing string under them. There's something wrong with those blocks, isn't there? Well, you can do this by simply placing four stairs like this and then put swaps in here and it will seem like this is a full block, however, the hitbox is wrong, so later on, people will find out that it is actually just four stairs. Barriers can be used with redstone. Use this command to give yourself a barrier, and now you can place redstone on it. You can name villagers by spamming the name tag on the villager or by simply naming the villager while it is a baby. If that doesn't work, then you can just stand in the nether portal with your name tag and there you go, I just named the villager. Items will get stuck in midair in the world border. Pumpkins have two stems one at the top and one at the bottom. The world border is visible from under bedrock. Right now I'm being chased by a cure bunny. Of course it's trying to kill me and uh, you can use this to make a trap for your friends. Simply get a name tag named toast, use it on the cure bunny and now it seems like it is just a normal rabbit, however, for some reason it is chasing you. And if you just let it do nothing... Oh, that's because I'm unpeaceful. But if you have a difficulty, it's going to try to kill you. Ah, uh, yeah, it's not very successful at doing it. Okay, that, that's better. If you're using multiple potions, their colors will blend.
instead of repairing a tool with resources that you used to make a tool, just make a new one. So here I have an iron pickaxe. I'm going to make a new one. And now I'm just going to combine it. Let's see what is better. Oh, I can only do it like this. Yes, and in the end I spent less levels and also less resources to repair it. Beacons and ender chests use obsidian in their crafting recipe. However, you can mine them with a normal iron pickaxe. So as you can see we got the beacon. And for the ender chest we just need an iron pickaxe with a silk touch enchantment. And now after we mine it, we're going to get the chest even though it's made out of obsidian. And normally for obsidian you need a diamond pickaxe. If you right click with a spawn egg on a rabbit, you're going to get the same babies as the parent. However, if you do the same but with a villager egg, then you're always going to get random babies. If you want to move a horse over the ocean, then just use the lead and sit in a boat. And there you go. You can also do this for other mobs, but I think the horse is the most useful one for this. However, I don't know what use you might have for the mobs, so yeah, now you know. If you're using a lot of command box in your command box project, then you might want to consider using carpets to indicate what's where. This way it's going to be easier to see which command box do what. Alex, the new pair model, isn't entirely new. If you look at this picture from Minecon 2013, then you can see someone familiar, right? Right there. You can mix the color of the beacon with stained glass. If you name a minecart with a custom name on an anvil, and then put the minecart down on a rail and break it, then the minecart is still going to keep its name, even after you broke it. Using this command right here, you can put a custom player head on a villager. And you can also put other blocks on the villager, and it's up to you, just use this command right here. And of course, using the same command, you can also put box on your own head. However, did you know that if you use a cactus and put it on your head, then you can actually see the head wear right there. Other than the normal zombies, leader zombies also exist. They're stronger and they can also summon other zombies. More information about this is going to be in the description and I suggest you give it a read because it's very interesting because apparently some zombies are stronger than the others. If you want to be able to see underwater while being on a boat, then just put on a helmet with respiration on it. And as you can see, everything gets whiter. And now it's easier to see. If you're caving and you want to find out which direction is where, then simply just dig a hole in the ceiling and place the torch at this block right here. And now look at the torch. So that is south. And let's look at the three right now. Yes, it is south, I guessed it correctly. So this means that this is north this is west and this is east yep everything is correct so this is a way to find out which direction you're facing without looking at a free if you're ever in danger and you're about to die like i am right here right now then before dying you should try to press f3 quickly and this way you'll be able to see your coordinates and you'll be able to return there to pick up your stuff. Do you see anything right there? No? How about now? So those are actually invisible spiders and if you're far away and you have a low render distance then you'll be able to see them 
in the edge. This next one right here requires a command, however it does look pretty cool. So here I have two armor stands and behind them I have two tripwire hooks. So if I run this command right here, which by the way is going to turn all entities within five blocks invisible, so like this, what we're going to get is basically code tracks. So as you can see, the plate mail and the leather, what's it called, tunic, uh, are hung on the tripwire hooks. So that looks pretty cool. Giants can actually wear armor. You can change your skin's arms by going to your Minecraft profile on the Minecraft website. And right now I have the white version, but if I want them to be a little bit more smaller, I can just click this and upload another skin with smaller arms. And you can also change your Minecraft name by going to Mojang's website and logging in to your account. Right now I'm surrounded by pigmen and of course it's not safe but right now they're not attacking me. I'm not wearing any armor and now I'm going to show you a trick which is going to allow you to kill them without them actually getting unhappy. So what we're going to do is kill them with one hit. So I killed this guy, nobody is unhappy, that's great. Let's kill this guy, nobody is unhappy. And the reason for that is I'm getting a critical strike on the pigman and I also have a smite 5 sword which allows you to kill the pigman in one hit. But of course, be careful, because if you mess up, then you're going to die. Rain hydrates cropland. And now let's build a house. So in order to do this, find a spruce tree and then put a block right here, put lava here and let it fall down. All right, so the tree is going to start burning. So we need to wait a little bit more. And by the way, if you find a tree that is seen a snow biome, then you should clean the snow off first. And you can do that with a water bucket. And now let's wait for the tree to burn. Um, well, I didn't plan to do this, so... I guess if you're going to make a house like this, then you should consider moving it away from other trees. But I didn't consider that. Uh, well, whatever, let's uh, make our house. So I, I waited a couple of minutes, and now I should be able to finish the house, so to do that I just place the water bucket, the water is going to flow down, okay, let's remove the water source and let's wait for the water to disappear, and here we still have flower. That's something that we need to wait to get rid of. And I will update you in a couple of minutes when the lava disappears as well. So let's take a look at our house. It's a nice symmetrical shape. And let's go inside. As you can see, no unnecessary blocks inside and everything is perfect. Did you know that you can have a water road for your boat in the air? So let's just go into the boat and off we go. Oh, and it ended. This structure right here is pretty simple. It can be done in survival Minecraft without cheats. And it's a pretty old trick that allows you to create floating water and it uses ice. So here we have an ice block and what we're going to do is place a torch right here. Make sure that it is at least one block away from the ice. And now let's wait. And also make sure that the water blocks actually don't touch each other or else it's all going to break. I'm going to show you that later. For now let's wait for the ice block to melt. Oh, 
Okay, there it is. So it melted and now this ice block is now part of the water structure and it doesn't fall down. So that's cool. Now I was talking about breaking it and basically you just need to place another block next to the water block to break it all. And as you can see it basically goes in a chain reaction, so be careful with that. Teleportation doesn't actually teleport you, what it does is it moves you pretty quickly a few blocks away. If you want to find the ender portal using only two eyes, then I have a guide for this in the description, which you can check out and do it yourself. This is an end portal frame, and interestingly enough, silverfish actually take damage from it. So as you can see it was standing on it, it was taking damage, it walked off and it's not taking damage. And that's pretty interesting. Oh, and by the way, the video is coming to an end now. I hope you guys enjoyed the 64 facts. And yeah, if you want to see more and you haven't watched the other parts yet, then I suggest you do so by clicking the links in the description. So I have 128 more tricks and also 256 more tricks. So make sure to check those out and also check out my channel for more cool things. And I'd like to thank you for watching and I'll see you later. Bye bye.